Hi, this is Miss Warnow. We are back with our um, continuing our videos on the moles, and we're going to talk about empirical formula and molecular formula. You need to have out a sheet of paper, you need to have out your periodic table, and you need to have out a calculator. Hi, so when we talk about the molecular formula uh, for a compound, that's the true formula as it exists in nature. It's the, it's the true ratio of atoms in the chemical formula. But when we talk about the empirical formula, for a compound, it's the reduced version. It is when the um, the elements or atoms are in their simplest ratio. It's also known as simplest formula. Sometimes the empirical and molecular formulas are identical. So here are some compound names. You have hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2. That's the chemical formula for hydrogen peroxide. But its empirical formula is when you look at these subscripts and make sure you reduce them to their lowest. Um, so the ratio between hydrogen and oxygen is a one to one. Carbon dioxide is CO2. And so in this case, the empirical formula happens to be the same as the molecular formula. For butane, the um, molecular formula is C4H10. The empirical formula would be taking that four and 10 and reducing it. And so you say, well, what does four and 10 reduce to? Two and five. And then iron two oxide is FeO. And so um, the empirical formula is already in its lowest term, so it's also FeO. All right, you can find the empirical formula for a compound if you have the masses or the mass percentages of each element in the compound. So the steps that we would do, we would get the mass of each element in the compound. If you're given percentages, you assume a 100 gram sample, and this way your percentages then just become your, um, your grams. You're going to convert each mass to moles, which is uh, part of the reason why we've been uh, doing that in the previous videos. And then you're going to compare all mole amounts to the elements and divide them by the smallest. This is called doing a mole ratio. And this usually leaves you with the whole number ratios, which are the numbers of the element in the empirical formula, so they become the subscripts. If you do not have a whole number, then you're going to multiply numbers by some positive integer until they are all whole numbers. So if your number is 0.9 or higher, you can round up to the nearest whole number. If it's 0.1 or lower, you can round down to the nearest whole number. But what if it, was, it ended in 0.5? You cannot round that 0.5, so you'd have to multiply it by 2 to get to the nearest whole number. What if it was 0.33? You cannot round that down. You'd have to multiply it. And so if we multiply it by 3, we get near to a whole number, or 0.66. Um, we can also multiply it by 3, and then 0.25. So you multiply it by 4. You would just keep multiplying until you get to um, a whole number. And then you would write the empirical form. So let's work a few of these. All right, so it says find the empirical formula for a compound that is 5.9% hydrogen and 94.10% um, sulfur. So I'm going to assume 100 gram sample. So my 5.90% just becomes my grams of hydrogen. And I'm going to need to convert that to moles, whatever you use up top and down on bottom, I'm trying to get to moles of hydrogen. And one mole is equal to the molar mass from the periodic table. And so when you punch this into your calculator, you get 5.8. Um, five, I think it's three, two <laughs> moles of hydrogen. I normally, since this isn't your final answer, I normally carry uh, this part out four places um, just to make sure I have enough uh, numbers mathematically to work with. Then we're going to do 94.10% sulfur, so we're going to convert it to moles. And we've been converting to moles, so you should know how to do this step. And then when you divide it, you get 2.9351 moles of sulfur. Now we're in moles. Then what we need to do is find the ratio between the hydrogen and the sulfur. And so we do that by dividing by the smallest one. And so since 2.9351 is smallest, that's what I'm going to need to divide both of these by. And what you'll find is this ends up being 1 and this ends up being 2. These become your subscripts. So the formula is H2S, which is hydrospheric acid. 
The next one says, what is the empirical formula for a compound that is 25.90% nitrogen and 74.10% oxygen? So we'll assume we have a 100 gram sample, so that 25.90% became grams. Notice that um, just like before, I'm writing my unit in the substance. Whatever units up top comes down on bottom. I'm trying to get to moles, and one mole equals 14.1. And then when you do this math, you get 1.8487 moles of nitrogen. And then you come down here and do the same thing for the oxygen. And mole equals 16.0. And we've done the process I'm doing right now in, in the video. So on the previous video, so you should be quite familiar with how to, um, to do this get moles of oxygen. So the new thing here is now we've converted to moles, we need to um, find the mole ratio between nitrogen and oxygen. So we'll do that by dividing by the smallest one, that equals one, and divide this one. And when we do that one, we get 2.5. 2.5 cannot round, so we have to say, well, what number could we multiply by 2.5 to get to the nearest whole number? And we want to be the lowest number, so we start with 2 and um, we multiply it by 2, that's going to give us 5. And what we do to 1, we have to do to the other. So now it's going to be N2O5. I'll use a nomenclature, dinitrogen pentoxide. The next one says a 25 gram sample of a compound contains 6.64 grams of potassium, 8.84 grams of chromium, and 9.52 grams of oxygen. Find its empirical formula. So we'll write down our given. We need to get these to, um, to moles here. So for potassium, looking on your periodic table, um, grams of potassium, moles of potassium, one mole is equal to 39.10. And then when we do, do that math, we get 1698 moles of potassium. And then we're going to come down here and do 8.4 grams of chromium. We want to get rid of the grams up here. And right now, I know that this part here is kind of old because you've been doing it, so many of them. But we are. We do need to show all of our work each time, so please um, be copying this example problem, having a good one in your notes so that you have all that you need. Yep. And so then we get 0 0.595 moles of um, oxygen. So we're going to divide by the smallest one, which is this, on a mole ratio. So as I'm writing this, I'm just going to repeat. So what you do is you always convert to moles, and then you divide by the smallest one. Okay, so this is one. This is one. And when we do this, we get 3.5. Well, we can't round 3.5, so we would multiply it by 2 to get 7. And what we do to 1, we have to do to them all. So, um, so that ends up being, I'll switch colors here, that ends up being um, K2. CR2O7, so that would be uh, oops, potassium <laughs> um, dichromate. Right. This next one says um, molecular formula. You find the molecular formula for a compound if you have um, its empirical formula as well as its molar mass. So the first thing you need to find the empirical formula if it's not given, and that's what I just showed you how to do. They'll always give you the molar mass. Um, Excuse me, they always give you um, the molar mass of the molecular formula. You will have to calculate the molar mass of the um, empirical formula. Once you take these two and find the ratio between them by dividing the, um, the molar mass of the molecular formula by the molar mass of the empirical, that's going to give you a whole number. Okay, remember 0.9 we round up, 0.1 we round down. But if you get like 2.5, you've done something wrong and you need to go back and check it. And then you multiply the empirical formula subscripts by this whole number. So this is actually quite simple. I'll show you this. It says find the molecular formula for a compound with the empirical formula of CH2 and it has a molar mass of 84 grams per mole. Take the molar mass the molecular formula, and we have to divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So here's the empirical formula. You have one carbon, and you have two hydrogen. And so um, 
that ends up being, this mass over here ends up being 14.03. So we'll put that over here. And that ends up being 6. So what you do is you take this 6 and multiply it to those subscripts. So 6 times 1 is 6. And then 6 times 2 is 12. So this would be your molecular formula. Find the molecular formula for a compound with an empirical formula, CH2O, and the molar mass of 9. We have the molar mass of the molecular formula. We have to come over here and calculate the molar mass of the empirical. There's one carbon. There's two hydrogen. And there's one oxygen. Sorry. Okay. And so when you do that, you get 30.03. So you come over here, put 30.03. And when you divide 90 by 30.03, you get 3. So then you take that 3 and you multiply it to the subscripts in CH2O. So 3 times the 1 here is 3. 3 times the 2 on the hydrogen is 6. And the 3 times the 1 on the oxygen is 3. So this would be your formula, your molecular formula. And notice your molecular formula should reduce back down to your empirical. What is a molecular form for a compound that is 40% carbon, 6.6% hydrogen, and 53.4% oxygen? So we have its molar mass, so we know we're going to be doing 120 divided by the empirical mass, but we don't know the empirical formula. So we need to find that out. So we have 40.0 grams of carbon over 12.01 grams of carbon, one mole of carbon. And then we have 6.6 .6 grams of hydrogen. We need to convert that to moles. And then we have 53.4 grams of oxygen. We need to convert that to moles. And then when you do all of this math, you end up with... Um, Zero, oh, sorry, maybe not zero. Let's look in the head. You end up with 3.3306 moles of carbon. You end up with 6.5476 moles of hydrogen. And here you end up 3.3375 moles of oxygen. And so remember, once we convert to moles, we have to divide by the smallest, which is this. And what we do to one, we have to do to them all. And so this ends up being one, this ends up being two, and this ends up being one. So we end up with CH2O. That is our empirical formula. We want our molecular formula. So we have to figure out what is the um, molar mass of CH, um, CH2O. And so I believe earlier we found that to be 30.03, so when we do that, we need to take 120, let's do that real quick, we'll say 120 divided by 30.03, and I get 3.99, which ends up being 4, so we'll take that 4 and multiply it, it'll be C4H8O4, and this is a molecular formula, so this is a multi-cell one. This one, take a moment and pause the video and work this one. It's similar to the one you just worked. All right, so the first thing we'll need to do is take all of these and convert them to moles. Okay, we did that. And then what we'll need to do is divide by the smallest, which we did. And we get these as our subscripts. So this ends up being the empirical formula. So we find the molar mass of uh, the empirical formula, and we take the molar mass in our problem here and divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula. We get 2, and then we take this 2 and multiply it to each of the subscripts here. So we get C8, H10, N4, O2. You should spend a little bit of time on these two problems making sure you understand. That concludes video four and concludes the last unit for this uh, last video for this unit. Be sure you took in-depth and high-quality notes and have good example problems in your notes.